Hi everyone, my name is Jason Klein. I'm the director of P20 initiatives at Northern Illinois University. And I am lucky today to be here with this group of seniors in high school. This is like a follow-up to our last Career Pathways user group meeting that was held at the beginning of December, 2020. And in that meeting, we saw a great presentation um, and, and you can watch that video. We'll link to it here in the show notes and, and maybe even on the screen. Um, because it's YouTube, we can do that. We'll go ahead and, uh, and direct you to that presentation or the blog post itself to learn more about what's going on. But right now we wanna take advantage of this time to dive in and talk with these students about their kind of college and career planning processes, where they're at and what they're thinking. And hopefully all of us in all of our schools can kind of learn from their experiences to, to do the things that are going well for them and to fine tune our current practices to make them even better. So let's start with introductions. Who wants to jump in first? I can go first. Go for um, it. My name is Evie Wilson. Um, like you said, I am a senior at Geneseo High School. Um, there I'm very involved in different sports. I'm in gymnastics, track and cheer. I'm also a member of band. Um, after I graduate high school, I plan on going to college. I'm still searching for different colleges, but I'm interested in studying business. I'm not sure exactly what in business yet, but that is my main interest. Cool. Awesome. Thanks. Who's next? I'm Avery Majorkurth, and I go to Geneseo High School. I am involved in cross country and track, and then in National Honor Society and Athletic Leadership Group. I do not know where I'm going to go to college yet, but I have about six colleges in mind, and I'm thinking about studying pharmacy with a focus in biochemistry. Awesome. Next. My name is Morgan Sims. I'm also a senior at Geneseo High School. I've been involved in volleyball, basketball, and track. I'm also involved in NHS and Lake Crew, and after high school, I'm going to go to Iowa State University and study architecture with a minor in sustainability. Cool. Allison, uh, I'm involved in track, tennis, National Honor Society, Link Crew, and Athletic Leadership Group. I have my colleges narrowed down to about three, and I don't know yet what I'm going to major in, but I'm still researching. So I think this is really important for everybody watching. We're sitting here in December, just before winter break, and of the four of you, you, you all know you want to go to college. There's only one of you who've said, well, this is where I'm going. And, um, and two of you are pretty specific about what you want to study. Then we've got a third person who's uh, got a very clear general idea of what to study. And then, and then a fourth person who's like, I'm still figuring that out. And, and that's okay because we know people go to college and figure that out. One of our goals statewide in Illinois among all educators is to make sure that college is as cost effective as possible, whatever college looks like for different high school students and that you don't spend like three years thinking you wanna study something and then discover you hate that. And now you spend three more years in college to get your degree and you've spent six years in college and whereas maybe you could have spent four, four and a half or five and saved a lot of money um, and so, so that's a really interesting thing for us to be thinking about as we talk about this. So for those of you who, well, for all of you, I mean, Allison, even, even as you're trying to wrestle with what you're thinking you want to do, I'm sure there's some things that you know you don't want to do. So how and when, and tell us the stories, did you guys become interested in the specific career areas you're you're thinking about, or if you've got a great story about a career area that you've kind of eliminated, how did you do that? So um, we wanna hear those stories. I think that the first time actually we started um, using the Career Connections website, I connected with um, a lady named Sarah Brack, and she was obviously an alumni from Geneseo High School. And uh, that year was sophomore year, so I was uh, super interested in science, and I really thought that that was going to be where I was going with my life. I loved all things to do with plants, so she told me all these botany classes I would take and different areas of research I would do. Um, and as she got talking about it, I realized this is not at all what I'm interested in. So um, it wasn't 
I guess it didn't encourage me to go a certain way with uh, my interests, but it did show me what I'm not as interested in. So, I mean, being able to eliminate that. And then also I worked um, at my dad's office this summer and he's an optometrist and I'm always being nudged by different people like, oh, are you going to take over his practice? You know, mm -hmm. is that interesting? And getting that job experience, um, obviously I wasn't checking people's eyes, but I was still in the environment and um, that is something also that I can eliminate. So just having these different experiences with, obviously they're very different things, but um, that has kind of showed me where I want to go. Before we go on to someone else, can you tell us what it was about those experiences that helped you go, oh, I know I don't want to do botany or optometrism? Well, um, Sarah was talking about a lot of labs that you would have to do in college. And I have enjoyed some labs that I've um, been involved in in high school, but I just didn't think that's what I wanted to spend my time doing. And I wasn't very interested in that sort of thing. And then when I was working with my dad, it was fun to get to know his staff. And, you know, I was working with my dad. So it was cool to be in the family business. But I just realized being cooped up in an office and just doing one thing all day is that's not where I wanted to go with my career path. Cool. Yeah. Who else? I took kind of a different approach than Evie is I talked to, I was thinking about doing math and science, but I didn't know what kind of math and science. So engineering was the first place that I leaned. And I started talking to people on the website and some of them gave me really helpful information. I was like, wow, this would be so fun to do. And then I started talking to people who do like specialized pharmacy. And, I, and then I talked to them. I was like, no, that is what I want to do. And so it was like, I just got all this like feedback about the different kinds of like, I just thought when I thought of pharmacy, I just thought of those people at Walgreens and Walmart mm -hmm. who just stand there counting medicine. And I was like, that's just not what I want. And then I talked to people who are in like labs and be, like invent new medicines. And I was like, that's mm -hmm. what I want to do. How, how did you go though, from talking about engineering related stuff to having those initial conversations about pharmacy in the first place? Um, I don't really remember how. I just was looking at different math and science things. And I talked to my chemistry teacher about a little bit of it. And she was like, oh, I would take it back and I would go into pharmacy school if I could. And I was like, oh, that's different. And so I just looked into it and started talking to people. Cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Who else? Mine's kind of the same thing as Avery. Um, I had like a general idea of what I wanted to do. So I reached out to a bunch of different people. I was, I'm, I've always been interested in design. So I was thinking like general design, interior design. What can I do with this? Um, so I reached out and I was like, no, that's like not really what I see myself doing in the future. I don't think I'd be happy in that field. Um, so then one of the interior designers I reached out to directed me to architecture. So I started emailing a couple of different architects and one of them happened to go to Iowa State and I still have an email chain with that person. So it's really helpful just to like put feel feelers out for everything and then figure out where you want to go from, from there. That's awesome. Allison, did you have anything you wanted to add on this one? So I've emailed like maybe a total of 30 people and about half of them I emailed because their career choices interested me and the other half I emailed them because their college interested me. So it was actually really cool to get feedback from both different types of people. Like some of them told me about college experiences that I needed to know because I have no idea. I don't have any older siblings. So the whole college thing is crazy to me. And then the other half were about careers. And I still don't have it narrowed down, but if I want to look back at those emails and read all the information they sent me, I have it at my fingertips. So it's not that big of a deal to like research more into something that I found interesting because I have all of that right there. Allison, were all 30 of those people through the, the school alumni website? Just scroll through all however, 2,000, whatever, how many there are, but I scrolled through all of them and wrote down every single name that I was interested in. And it took me a long time. It was kind of my quarantine project. It was actually really fun. That's, that's really cool. That's really cool. So for all of you, the, the school website was actually a real important centerpiece of kind of your, your discoveries. And it is, it is really interesting. I mean, I went to a high school 
um, that was about twice as big as your school in the suburbs of Chicago. And, um, and I knew of your school when I was in high school too, like I, you know, but that, that there are so many people that have gone to, into so many different careers and all over the world, I think that's pretty powerful. And one of the things we even talked about with Mr. Mackey is that for, for schools that are much smaller than yours, because you know Illinois is such an interesting state, we have high schools with uh, literally as few, <coughs> excuse me, as 50 students and as many as 5,000 students. And um, if, if I'm in a real small school, those small schools can, can organize something similarly like around the athletic conference or in a county. So to try and still get that benefit that you guys already have. Are there any other stories about the website before we go on that, that you guys want to talk about? I didn't anticipate that all four of you would necessarily say, oh yeah, no, this totally helped me. I talked to all these people through it. So that's awesome. Anything else on the website? Um, oh, I guess or, I, go ahead. I could share one more thing. Um, <clears throat> this is actually a positive experience that I had with it. Not that the other one wasn't, but it kind of led me a little bit towards uh, what I want to go into. Um, I was actually filtering because on the website you can filter um, the, their graduation year, what their uh, major, what they majored in, what college they went to and stuff. So um, I'm actually looking at Illinois Wesleyan University as a very real possibility to go to for college. And so I filtered that and I found a lot of people on there um, who went to Wesleyan and I actually found this girl, uh, her name's Emily, and she was a cheerleader and she um, obviously went to GHS and she did cheer in college. So it was really encouraging to find someone who had the same interests as me. And she um, is in business development. So that was awesome that she really has a lot going on that uh, I also wanna pursue. So I actually called her and we had a conversation about the college and different things she's involved with there. And she kind of gave me a rundown of what her job is like and the kinds of things that interest her that uh, led her to um, business marketing and then more business development too. So it was really helpful to hear from here, her and then um, just also have in the back of my mind that she was in the same spot that I was at one point. So um, just talking to someone who has been through everything that I have, uh, it was reassuring. So this is really interesting. I'm glad you brought up the cheerleading piece because I was wondering this when you guys were introducing yourselves. You're all super involved in high school in a bunch of different activities. Um, and, and then when you brought up Wesley and part of the reason this, this I'm like, oh, I gotta ask about this is I know um, a, a parent in the community who just announced that, that his son who's a senior in high school is gonna be playing football at Wesleyan starting next year. And so, you know, that was posted to Facebook this weekend and, and whatever. The, to what degree though, um, is your, your, are your current interests in those extracurricular activities, are those things you wanna continue? Are those things that are factoring into your, um, your choices of post-secondary institutions of colleges and universities? Um, I'm just curious to know if that's been a factor at all for any of you. And if so, what activity or activities are those factors that you're considering? Um, well, for Wesleyan, actually for any college I was uh, looking at going to, I wasn't um, thinking about doing any sports for them, but I uh, got in contact with the coach there and he was really interested in having me do track and field and be a pole vaulter for them because I think they only have one other vaulter on their women's team. So, um, of course, I, I'm a first child. Uh, I don't know who else mentioned that, but a lot of us are here. Um, and I was just kind of worried about the time commitment and different things that involved in college because, you know, I had my fun in high school with different things, but should I just focus on academics? Um, but after talking to the coach and talking to Emily through the career connections, I realized that it, it'll be another outlet for me to make friends and automatically mm -hmm. just have a group there. So, I think now that I've um, talked to some different people and actually gotten evidence about how great it is and how many people you meet, I think that it's definitely a real possibility for me to continue my cool. um, track and field career or cheerleading in college. Cool. Anybody else on that? Um, so I was looking into running cross country in college and 
so I've talked to a few smaller schools and that's I've set on going to a small school for four years and then transferring to a big school for my last two years of pharmacy school if that was what I was going to do and so I talked to a few small schools and their coaches and some of the girls on the teams and then uh my one of my cross-country coaches was like you just need to talk to the coach from Drake like you would fit in so well there and I was like that's such a big school for me to like go to and so I talked to the coach and he was like I'd be so interested in meeting you and so I was like questioning if that was like a big school is what I wanted to do especially sports wise that's a lot of commitment and mm -hmm. so through the connection website one of my coaches that I've had mm -hmm. a few years ago was on there and so I talked to her about her experience because she went to Iowa State as a track runner mm -hmm. and so it was just nice to talk to her about her experience and how much time commitment it really is to go to a big school and so I mean it's really played a factor in what I'm doing, but I still don't know exactly which choice I'm going to take with it. Cool. That's really interesting too, because Drake is obviously uh, home to one of the most renowned college uh, track and field events of the year. And so that's, that's pretty cool. That's pretty special just to even be considering that. Um, either of the other two, do you want to share anything about those activities and what you're thinking for, for post high school? Well, I'm not planning on playing sports in colleges because Iowa State is such a big school, but FCA is a big deal to me. Um, so I was really looking for like the religious um, student leadership groups. So mm -hmm. um, I'm going to get involved in SALT at Iowa State, and I found a church on campus that I'm really excited to go to. So the Career Connections page actually helped me with that too because I reached out to alumni of Iowa State and Geneseo and ask them about the SALT organization. So it was really helpful for that too. Wow, you guys are really maximizing this tool. I mean, it's so important. We heard, we heard it mentioned that when you're in whatever the activity is, it starts to build a, a smaller community for you. Even at a small school, that can be important when people are coming from all over the place and you do kind of have a built-in group of of friends or at least acquaintances right away. And so you're all taking advantage of that. Allison, I don't want to cut you out of this. Did you have anything you wanted to add? I don't know if I'm going to play sports in college. I'm leaning toward no right now, but I want to go to a college that will have a lot of activities and clubs that I can participate because making friends and being involved is important to me. And this is kind of unrelated, but I do want to go to a college big enough that will have all of my major options because I know that some colleges have less majors and I need to, if I don't know what I'm doing, I need to have all of the options ready in case I need to switch around. So side note, but yeah. No, that is, that is very good, very good advice. And, and so while our primary audience today is, is teachers and counselors and administrators in schools, I mean, if a student was watching this, that would be great advice for a student because you can certainly uh, backslide a little bit unintentionally when you transfer if, if something was gonna count at one place to get rid of a requirement, but it's not going to somewhere else. And, and you can insulate yourself against that by having your options available to you uh, wherever you decide to go. So it's smart thinking. Um, so I, we've heard about, from Mr. Mackey, we heard about sophomore English, and at least one of you mentioned that. Are there other classes where you actually did something in class it was directly related to careers or, or was that not the case for you? Um, I would say that the sophomore English was about the only project and experience that we've had with the Career Connections. Um, it was like the introduction to the platform. We were the first students to see it. Mm -hmm. um, and then from there, it was basically just you are introduced to it, you understand how to use it, um, and then use it whenever you feel like you need to. So. I know I've taken advantage of it all of the time. I like make phone calls and I email multiple people and I've used it consistently since sophomore year, but that was the only project we've done in school with it. So here's a question I'm gonna ask the four of you that none of you was prepared for. And so I apologize about that, but thinking about some of your classmates, I mean, clearly all of you are very self-directed. You're, you're on top of this and taking advantage of this tool to do things in your, own, in your own time and in your own ways. And you don't need someone telling you, hey, don't forget about that tool. Hey, go do this. Um, without using anybody's names, 
that you're in school with, but think about some, some other people that you go to school with who, who may not be approaching this like you. What kinds of activities do you think we as teachers or, or principals or counselors could be doing to help classmates who aren't using it independently like, like you guys are um, that you think would be helpful? Um, I, I just, think, oh, oh, sorry, you can go. You can go, Evie. Okay. Um, well, like you said, um, it's an incredible resource and I, we're very lucky to have it in our school. Um, but I think that maybe in different classes, I think it was good to do it in English class, but I know that as sen our juniors and seniors, there's classes like managing lifestyles and um, just classes that are directed more towards uh, your last couple years of high school that could probably incorporate a little bit more um, to the college sphere and, you know, like uh, different careers and stuff like that, just because I mean, of course, we want to learn how to take care of a kid or to cook food and, you know, learn all those different things. But um, me, for me, I want to be focused on what's coming directly after high school and what I have to worry about uh, right out of the gate. So mm -hmm. I think that'd be helpful. Avery? Um, so one of our requirements at our high school, and I don't know how it works at other high schools, is to take a consumer education class to graduate. Mm -hmm. And yep, so that's a, law. I, that's a law in the whole state. Okay. So everybody, every high school senior has to has to have taken that at some point in high school. Now, it doesn't mean the class is the same everywhere, but go ahead. Go ahead. Avery. So I Sorry took an that. economics class this year for my consumer education class. And one of the things I wish we would really focus on is the budgeting part of college, because we're talking about budgeting for the real world. But we're not taking into account that some of us might have college loans and school loans afterwards. Mm -hmm. And so just making us aware of our college loans, which then forces us to think about what colleges we're gonna do and what we're gonna do after we get out of high school. Because it's, I feel like most of the stuff we're focusing on are things that will help us once we have a job and we're settled down, but like we're missing the piece that's in between the high school and the getting the job and settling down. And I think that's the big focus that I feel like I'm missing. Yeah, that's really important. And so for, for administrators in particular who are watching this, if you're not familiar with the PACE framework, um, that's what the PACE framework seeks to address is to ensure that no student in the state says what Avery just said, which I think what Avery just said is what most students in most schools would say. I think that's, that's a pretty common thing to say. And so part of that is that financial literacy and part of that is understanding and, and some of you are still deciding between schools um, if these two schools can both get me to where I want to go, and this one costs this much money, and this one costs this much money, you know, it doesn't always mean that this one is the better option, but that should be a factor that you're, that you're considering um, in, in making that decision, um, because there's going to be a time where you want to buy a car or a house or something expensive down the line, and, and if you've got you know, this much difference in loans or whatever the case is or money you've already spent, um, then you don't have that available for something else. So um, again, not the only factor, but it is a factor for people to consider. And so that's a great point. Uh, anyone else? Um, we have a pretty extensive like vocational class um, list, I guess, at the high school. Um, and I feel like they could really take advantage of the Career Connections website just because all of the alumni who graduated from Geneseo can be in the Career Connections. So someone who went to a two-year technical school to become a welder, mm -hmm. they're going to be in the Career Connections website. So those kids should be taking advantage of it to see like if that's really what they want to do or if they want to do a different two-year technical school or maybe the four-year is what they want to end up doing. So I feel like mm -hmm. it doesn't necessarily have to be in the consumer ed or like a standard classroom, I think the vocational classes could use it too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's absolutely something that should be used across the day. Now, we've heard about, about the working, working in, in the optometry office, but we haven't heard about either other work experiences or we've, we know you guys are super involved in a wide range of extracurricular experiences. I guess um, I'd like to know what, what you think about whether or not either your work experiences that you may or may not have had or your extracurricular experiences, how they've helped prepare you for careers or help you make decisions around careers. Um, has there been anything 
where you feel like they've had an impact on you for, for that? Um, okay, so I'm a volleyball coach for a local club, and I also work at one of the golf courses in Geneseo. So mm -hmm. having two jobs at the same time has really taught me time management. And with the volleyball coaching position, I've learned um, how to be a good teacher, and I've learned how to communicate with people who don't necessarily, like, know the same things that I do. And then at the golf course, um, it's teaching me independence because normally I'm in the clubhouse by myself, and I have to be responsible for everything that's happening. So I've learned a lot from the two jobs that I've had. Great. Those are great examples of what we're calling the essential skills. Thanks for sharing those. Other, other comments about either work or co-curricular, extracurricular activities that have, you feel like are helping you with either making decisions about careers, what you like, or as we've already heard, maybe what you don't like, um, or skills that you're developing from those experiences? Um, I was a lifeguard um, when obviously there, the pools were open and everything. Um, and I really enjoyed it. Um, I'm good at taking directions and, you know, following out orders and everything, but we always had a manager, obviously, in, on the deck and everything, making sure everybody was okay. And I realized that I think um, any job that I have, I want to be able to keep on moving up there in the ranks. So, I mean, like I said, I liked following the direction and being one of the underdogs just a regular lifeguard, but I kind of like the idea of being able to someday move up into like a management position and kind of be the boss and just kind of have that kind of responsibility over um, different employees or people. Mm -hmm. Any other comments about this? I just started a job a couple weeks ago at a supportive living place for elderly people. Mm -hmm. And it's it's okay. And like COVID makes everything kind of sad there, places like that. But I think that it just taught, like it's taught me so far that I just want to do something that I can help people. And I always just love doing things for other people. And so I think that that was just my main focus in a career as well. And so just solidified what I thought that I wanted to do anyway. Yeah, that's, well, and that's a great example of, of having a job and actually all the jobs you guys have talked about are certainly things that either are helping someone or helping them bring some joy to themselves, but where right now uh, having your energy there is, is really helpful. So um, yeah, that's great. Allison, did you want to say something? I don't have any work experience. Well, I guess you could count in middle school, I was a peer tutor, and I did get paid for that. So I guess we can count that. Um, and I did enjoy helping my peers. So I guess that's the quality. Um, I know that I don't want to sit at a desk all day in my job. I know that. And also a side note is that I think a lot of seniors right now are experiencing problems with job shadowing because of COVID. Mm -hmm. Like it's a mm -hmm. lot harder to get hands-on experience in work fields that people are interested in. And I know that's definitely put a halt to my, I had stuff planned that I was going to try and shadow, but that didn't work because of COVID. So just side note again. Yeah, so that's going to continue to be important as you guys move through your, your post-secondary or college experiences. Um, you know, another year from now, hopefully things will look a lot different and you, you may have to be taking advantage of things like winter break to do some more of that than you would have otherwise maybe done. Um, that's a really great point that you bring that up, Allison, and, and are kind of thinking that through all the way that far in advance to know, oh yeah, here's the implications of that. Um, did someone else want to say something before I move on? Okay, so what, it, what is the most important thing to you, whether you've selected what you think you want to do or haven't, in kind of in your selection process and preparing for a career? What, what are the things that, that are most critical to you? And whatever they are, there's no judgment here. Is it you want to make a lot of money? Is it you want to have a lot of time off? Like, what are the things you don't want to sit in a windowless office all day? What are the things that are, are critical to you? Um, I know uh, for me, um, this might seem kind of childish, but it, when I'm 
thinking about picking a career for the rest of my life, it reminds me of this movie called The Bee Movie. And this bee has to pick a job he wants to do for the rest of his life. And it's just kind of overwhelming. And you're like, am I going to like this for the rest of my life? What am I going to do if I don't? So I just want to make sure that before I get into a career that maybe there's enough option and flexibility within the career itself that I can move around if um, it's not, if the first thing I try is not something I love, that I can use my experience and my knowledge to move to a different part of that kind of career. Um, but I just want to be passionate about what I do and to find something that I really love. Um, Avery said that she wants to help people and Sometimes putting people before myself is my downfall, but I think it could also be a really good quality for my future work. And so, yeah, I really just want to help people and be passionate about what I do. Connecting to what Evie said, um, I kind of have a broad field, I guess, with like the focus in biochemistry. So I did have something to fall back on if I was, I hated pharmacy and I just didn't enjoy it. But another thing is I just want to do something that I know is going to make me happy. Like, I don't want to come home from work and hate my job and hate everything. Like, I just want to be like, oh, my gosh, guess what happened today? And be so passionate about it that, like, it won't feel like I'm doing it, like, for the money that I'm doing it because I love it. So that was why I picked it because I am a science, math geek when it comes to school. I agree completely with, with Avery. And Evie, I want to be passionate about what I do. I want to come home at the end of the day and not feel like all my energy was drained out of me. I want to be exhausted, but in a good way. But I also want to help people and I want what I do to have a lasting impact. So I feel like with architecture, I mean, I'm going to design buildings. So like they're going to be around for a long time. Um, but I want people to like feel like love and like feel like they have a home in what I'm designing and stuff. I want it to be a safe space. Allison, any comments? Okay. Yeah, I want to do something significant and meaningful. And I also want it to effectively combine my interests. You know, like I need to take into account what I'm interested in and good at in high school and then mold that into something. So that way it goes a little better for me. So uh, just a couple quick things on this before we wrap up with with one last question. Um, first of all, it used to be, I mean, certainly when my parents were, were going to, to school and, um, and they both ended up becoming teachers, but at that time, people had typically had one to three jobs in their career and they were typically in, in the same career. Um, in the, I know this is gonna make me sound real old to you guys, but in the late 1990s, when I was a middle school teacher at the time, hilarious, right? Mm -hmm. um, they're in their mid mid 30s now. Um, they, I was like six though. Let's just be super clear about that. Um, the the predictions at that time were that students, adolescents, middle school and high school students then would have eight to ten jobs, and in their career. And so, and they, they may cross careers. Now, my own experience, I mentioned I was a teacher, I was a principal, but for 10 years, I was in charge of technology and communications and still did stuff with instruction. And when I started in that job, I was pretty technology literate, but I didn't know the stuff I needed to know about servers or networks. And, and, and I had to learn all that real quickly or there wasn't gonna be internet for, um, for 7,000 students and, and 1,200 staff members and so on and so forth. And so you, you can make those pivots in your career. Um, and I think that's something um, actually that you need to prepare for is making those pivots. So I would say uh, with a pharmacy degree or if you, you go out directly on for a master's or a professional degree, when you're done with that last degree, you're probably not done learning in a significant way. And again, listening to all four of you, you you're all well prepared for that. But that's a reality that um, that high school students should be thinking about, and we as as your teachers have to be thinking about. Whoa, whoa, whoa! It it doesn't necessarily matter if they know this. They need to know how to learn more importantly than than knowing this set of facts. So, with that said. 
based on what you know now, and I, I'm sure your answer to this question would be different a year from now and different five years from now. And certainly your, your COVID uh, junior and senior year experiences may have an impact on your answers. But based on what you know now, what advice would you give to, to teachers and school leaders, not just at your school, but at any school, about how best to prepare students for at least where you're at right now to make those decisions, to feel good about those uh, decisions, including even if it's knowing what they don't want to do as, as we've heard about too. What, what would be your advice to us to wrap us up here? I think it would be just to keep talking to us about different jobs. Like, I feel like we know like the basic of like doctor, nurse, and engineer, but there's so much more careers than I ever even thought that there were and so just keep telling us like about things that you hear and people that you know and like just I don't know like if you're a history teacher and you know someone who does something with history but nothing like a history teacher like I just want all the information fed to me because then I'll come home and I'll think about it like wow that was kind of cool or that's not at all what I like to do so like I just want information just to keep being fed to me even if I get tired of listening to it. I agree completely. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. <laughs> um, I feel like teachers have such a great opportunity. I mean, they see us all the time to tell us, like, this is what you can be doing with the material that I'm teaching. Like, these are the careers that you can go in in the math department or the history department. And with only doing one project about it, we're kind of limited to, like, our experience and expectations about what finding a career and finding a college means. So, like Avery said, I feel like we just need to know everything, like, feed us all of the information because you're doing that anyway. So like you have the time, it would just, it'd be helpful to know more, I guess. I think um, I absolutely agree with um, those statements, but I, one thing that I wish I heard a little bit earlier on than my parents telling me is that you don't have to have everything figured out. Like a lot of kids change their major and I think I know what I'm mm -hmm. doing and we all think we know what we're going to go into, but a lot of college students change their majors and completely change their paths. So just having that reassurance that you're not going to have everything figured out and you shouldn't have everything figured out yet. Um, hearing that a little sooner from people who I respect, of course, I respect my parents, but you know, my teachers and people who have been through it, um, that probably would have given me a little bit more calm um, in approaching this sort of thing. I think also having teachers share their experiences about how they got to what they got to also helps because my chemistry teacher talks about how she hates math, but then majored in chemistry. And I was like, well, there's a lot of math and chemistry, mm -hmm. and, but it helps lead you to where you want to go. And you're like, well, I can get into a chemistry major without enjoying math and still enjoying the chemistry part of it. Awesome. Uh, any other thoughts from you guys before we wrap up? Well, I'll just uh, leave you with this and anybody watching. One of the things, one of the themes for me uh, during, during this school year has been that uh, the more responsibility we can hand over to, uh, to young people, it's pretty clear to me, the better off we're all gonna be. Um, you guys get some things that, uh, that we certainly didn't understand when, when we were your age. And I think all four of you have shown us that in, in this video. So I wanna thank you for not only your time today and for doing that, but just how you're moving about the world generally. And um, thank you guys so much for joining me today and for sharing all these thoughts. And thank you to all of your teachers, um, administrators, counselors, the support staff there. You guys are doing a great job in uh, Geneseo. It is awesome what's going on. So thanks again.